Mr. Bruce Kane, New Age Citizen. Uh, he's going to talk to you guys about this whole uh, reason behind this event in the first place. So uh, give it up for Mr. Bruce Kane. Here he comes. <laughs> okay, well, my name is Bruce Kane. I'm editor of uh, New Age Citizen website. Um, from 89 to 97, I was uh, editor of New Age Citizen magazine, which was a magazine on social and drug reform. Um, from 92 to 97, for those six years, um, I organized a global uh, marijuana event that uh, piggybacked the uh, hash bash in Arn Arbor, which was known as uh, International Drug Policy Day. And then uh, my friend Dana Beal from New York, an old yippie, he picked it up with uh, the Global Marijuana March. Is anybody familiar with the Global Marijuana March? Yeah. Well, you know, it's D Dana could be more organized, but. Um, the, the Global Marijuana March uh, now is celebrated uh, first Saturday in May, I believe it is, um, in four or five hundred cities across the world. Everywhere, thank you, everywhere from Russia to South America to Detroit, you name it. And, um, you know, uh, what I'm going to talk about today basically is, um, you know, we'll talk about the initiative and that, but. The, the main thing is, you know, we're living in interesting times today, I think. And, um, you know, we've got this financial mess. They're trying to globalize our government. And it's all about control. And when I did the magazine, that, that was really my emphasis, because it wasn't like I really gave a shit if people smoked or not. But I don't like this control shit, you know? And that's what's going on. The government wants to control your ass, and uh, and we've got to stop it. Now, the the main reason I'm here tonight is because of the medical marijuana uh, initiative. Uh, is everybody registered to vote here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, here's my advice. You know, I, I'm uh, I'm actually uh, a write-in candidate for the uh, U.S. Marijuana Party for president, so I might get 300 votes, but. People need to stop buying into the system, and, and I don't know about you, I've done a lot of research on both candidates, they're both globalists, they're not going to do anything about marijuana, uh, they're not going to do anything about immigration, they're not going to do anything for the American people, you know, um, all these people are, you know, head over heels over Obama, but, but Obama is really a globalist. And if, if you look into it, you'll find he's pretty dangerous. He's going to be very dangerous. So what really needs to happen in 2009 is people in America and across the world need to start organizing against this, this global jihad that's going on, because that's really what's going on. They want global government. They want into your shit. They want to control your drug use. They want to know where you are all the time. And this electronic cage is being built. There's no, there's no question about it. So this November, you know, if anything else, you know, get out. Um, I would say don't vote for Obama or McCain. Write in Bruce Kane or write in Mickey Mouse. I don't care. But we need to start sending a signal that we do not buy the system anymore. You know, it's very important that we do this. So um, I'm wearing this. I'm going to take it off in a second. But my friend Lou devised these things when we were doing some of the initiatives during the uh, late 90s and, and early uh, 2000s, coming to the uh, Medical Marijuana Initiative. And uh, we would be walking around with these things because you could see them like 300 yards away, you know. So it, it was a good way of getting signatures. But uh, anyway, I'm going to take this off now. So <laughs> give, me, give me a second. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to structure this uh, little talk tonight, and uh, I've, I've always been interested in drug policy. I've, 
I've uh, done, you know, psilocybin, I've done mescaline, I've done LSD. Um, I've always, always been interested in these things. Um, so the, the way I'm going to structure this is um, marijuana, past, present, and future. Now, we'll start with the past. In the past, I would call this part um, the building of the cage. In other words, the building of, of this social control mechanism that, that's going on in this country today. Um, I guess, I guess uh, I'll, I'll try to draw this in quick, but you know, I think what people have to realize, first of all, is that uh, you know, it's not just humans that like to alter their states of consciousness, but even animals. And um, Siegel wrote an interesting book called Intoxication, where he looks at in the animal kingdom of you know how various animals will go out of their way to get high. You know. So it's been with us for probably hundreds of millions of years that animals have gone out of their way to get high, you know. So we're animals, so it's almost just natural that, that we also would want to get high. So then you look at uh, Homo sapiens, that would be us. We, we kind of disassociated ourselves with early uh, humanoid forms about 200,000 years ago. And uh, in following the, the bulls and the, and the deer, um, we found these funny mushrooms growing in the, the cow dung that they left. And, and that was uh, psilocybin, or as we like to call them, magic mushrooms. And the magic mushrooms and, and other such substances have been used, uh, like I say, for hundreds of thousands of years. I wouldn't be surprised if even earlier forms of humanoids uh, went out of their way. To, to use these psychedelic structures. In point of fact, um, most anthropologists, archaeologists believe now that um, religion itself was evolved from the use of hallucinogenic drugs, which if anybody's done hallucinogenic drugs, they might not need an explanation of why that might be. So let's move a little bit further and um, the first artifacts that we found of marijuana occurred in Mesopotamia and uh, Taiwan. Taiwan, about 10,000 BC, they found pots that had uh, hemp that was used to imprint designs in the pots. Uh, in Mesopotamia, about 8,000 BC, so 10,000 years ago, uh, they found uh, evidence of hemp uh, cloth used for clothing and stuff like that. And it probably went much further back than that, but you have to understand uh, the great floods and the, the glacial uh, melt of the last ice age ended about then, and so there's really not too many artifacts that go much further back. So again, we'll move forward. Um, Colonial America, um, all the ships, their sails were made of hemp. The rope was made of hemp, the caulking uh, between the wood to keep the water out was made of hemp. And in fact, in colonial America, you know, people could actually pay their taxes in hemp. That's how important hemp was. Um, and then we'll jump into the 1800s. Uh, a lot of people um, are surprised to know that in New York City, they had, um, in the 1850s, they had um, over 600 um, hashish bars that sold uh, marijuana hashish and, and coffee. You know, it kind of sounds like Amsterdam, doesn't it? So it was eight, 1850. And also during that period of time, marijuana tinctures were actually um, the most used analgesic in, in the United States during that period of time. And uh, what people have to recognize is that nobody ever thought until the 19...